Hello and welcome to Mastering Tricking, Tricking Tips. We're on the subreddit. I'm gonna give you some knowledge. My voice is still kinda gone. I'm not fully recovered from Bob's birthday bash this weekend. Wilson is working on the edit, but today I'm giving you guys the best tips I can before I wash my cats. So, let's get started. By the way, huge news. Mark your calendars. June 3rd to June 5th. MTG Mastering Tricking Gathering. We just got a date right now. I'm working through the logistics. There's more to announce, but mark your calendars. Come through to Maryland. It's gonna be a good time. Yo, I love it when trickers just like make it work. No matter where they're training, no matter what their environment is, if they see something that they can like flip on, move on, kinda work their body with, they're gonna use it. They're gonna use it. And I really appreciate that. And that's something with tricking and with like all movement athletes. Because Brendan asked me to. What did I ask you to do? Ooh! Ooh! Oh, let's go, dude! <laughs> ah! I can't yell. But yo, this is sick, dude. This is so sick. Yo, I didn't ask you to do a pop full like shuriken, but damn, I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did. Thank you for posting a banger. I really appreciate it when people post bangers. And this is a banger. G7 is getting better. How do you kick higher? That was really good. That was really good. So like the basic things to kick higher are like one, improve your flexibility. It looks like you have good flexibility, but you could always like get that change in your hips. Like do you see the angle of your hips right now? Like the two legs and the hips. You're like Try to get in everything in stream, yo. You're like here right now. The more you open up those hips, the more that leg is gonna get higher. So, one, work on your flexibility and moving that leg up. If you can do like a hook kick in slow motion, that's a great drill for that. The other thing you can do to make your hook kick higher, and this is something that Andy Lee does, jump really, really, really high and kick at the apex of your jump. You were kind of kicking on your way down if you look. It's like cheat setup, haven't left the ground. Yeah, you were kicking a little bit on your way down. You see how your kick is coming out as your foot is hitting the ground? If you kick while in the air and use your upper body to fight the opposition and sweep that leg across, it will look so much better and it will be higher. I mean, this is already a really, really good cheat seven, but if you wanna like go super nuanced, extend your hips a little bit more and kick at the apex of your jump. And that will lead to the highest possible cheat seven. And these are just me giving tips on your specific technique right now. If someone else showed me a different G7, I may give them entirely different uh, tips. Tricking is very individualistic. Ooh, your first cork attempt. What can you do to spin faster? What else can you do to improve? Oh, you're so welcome for all the support, man. Oh, I see what you're doing, okay. So there's a number of things that uh, I would work on here. Number one, right out the gate, the way you've set up your training situation, you're going to be forced to learn the cork traveling heavy to the side, because that's just how your matting is set up. What I would almost recommend is to not use a matted progression and work your cheat gainer until you're landing on two feet, and then slowly twist it around, like land two feet, land 90 degrees, land 180, land 270, and then do the full cork. That is the safest and most progressive way to do it. If this is just your first cork attempt, trying to like gain the air awareness and kind of, you got a good matting situation. And if you feel comfortable, you should kind of learn how to fall in the trick. So this is an amazing thing to do. I would just recommend training more of a cheat gainer progression. Your spin is not the issue. Your twist is actually really good. You shouldn't bend at the hips. Like you see what you're doing right here. This bend at the hips is going to force you not to twist as well. When you're twisting, I'm gonna use my butterfly knife as an example. I know this, I'm not a crazy person, I just really like butterfly knives. If you're going to twist, this position is a lot faster and easier than this position. This is very wide, you have a very large, like, mass spinning around your axis of momentum, but if you condense that, you'll twist a lot faster. 
So like focus on straightening out at the hips and getting along your axis of twisting. That will help you twist faster. But when it comes to your cork, one, this is an amazing first attempt, dude. Let's go. Two, your matting situation is gonna force you to train a little bit in a weird way. And I would really recommend training the gainer and then slowly twisting that. Thank you for the clip. I'm down to support. If people are posting stuff and they're super passionate about tricking, I wanna support them. That's why I'm here. Let's go. Yo, another first cork. Let's go. This is sick. Oh, that was good. That was really good. That was really good. And it's a similar matting situation where like you can see he's traveling in a little bit of an unnatural way because he wants to hit that resi. And even then, his back foot doesn't hit the resi. A lot of the times people use matting more as a mental crutch than a actual physical thing to limit injury. You're probably just as likely to get injured doing that cork on the spring floor than you are with that mat. Learning ukemi and learning how to fall is far more crucial than speeding up a progression by using matting. Matting will help you fall in a very controlled way, which is very important to learn, but you shouldn't use it as a big step when learning new tricks, especially something like this, cause you're gonna miss the mat. If you're forcing yourself to travel in an unnatural way as you're tricking, you're more than likely going to miss the mat and that is more dangerous than anything else in the world. I have a problem where every time I go for an aerial semi or a Webster, my back foot, the one I'm swinging first, lands in 90, the way it front, way less aesthetic, any tips to drill this? Okay, let me see exactly what he means. Oh, yes, yes. So, the reason your uh, aerial is like twisting the way it is, is because you're not jumping that much. You're being very much carried by the momentum of your kick. You're putting, or here's how I should say this. Your technique is so good that you don't need to put power into it. But here's the thing. The more power you put into it, the higher and the more powerful your aerial will become. You're very much throwing your arms down, kicking your leg, and then switching at the hip to execute this aerial. Try and make all those body positions work as a uniform jumping motion. As your upper body drives down, it actually puts weight into that base leg, which then acts as a spring to lift you up. And so does that back leg, which then is lifting behind you to give you flip. You need to put power into every single motion of your aerial. It is very aesthetic, I think, and your technique is very, very good. You can do it so well with so little power that if you add power, you will be amazing. So you can add power by drilling the aerial, of course, but focus on those little changes in your technique that I mentioned. Those will go a long way to improving this trick for you. Tips on cheat seven. I gave you tips on cheat seven. The cheat seven you posted earlier was better. Wait, wait, we got a progression here. We got a progression. Because I think this is the same. Yeah, this cheat seven was way better than the cheat seven he posted before. That is very good. That is very good. So it's like, here's the thing that I find with a lot of uh, trickers and a lot of people who are posting on this subreddit. You guys, if you're posting on here, if you're like active in this community, you will get better naturally. Don't feel like you have to invest all the time in the world. Don't feel like you need all the tips in the world. Just keep training. Follow the path and you will get better. I didn't give this guy any tips from this cheat seven to the upper cheat seven. But dude, he got so much better. And when he gets the tips I gave him on that cheat seven, he'll get even better better. It's all about just following the path. And so many other people have given cheat seven tips. This guy probably knows a shit ton of cheese seven tips. He just needs to actualize on that information. And from seeing this progression, this cheese seven to the one he posted uh, later, he is getting better. And that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Dante, good morning. What's up, dude? 
What's up? I realized that uh, it is the morning for a lot of people. I got my day started very early because I wanted to do a little businessy work before I streamed. 